So a lot of you ask, what's my backpack setup look like when I go on a backpack hunt? Well, this is a backpack hunt. We're here in the Kachina Peaks Wilderness of Arizona. Took us about, I don't know, three, three and a half hours to hike up here to 10,000 feet. And you just saw a video of me setting up my Hillybird. Uh, this is a Nalo 2 GT, my favorite of all their tents for, at least for what I do. You can see it's a two man, I use it as a one man. The vestibule is from here back to there. But a lot of you are asking, well, what do you do for weight? Well, depends on what it's going to be. Uh, here it's supposed to get down in the 20s at night. So I brought a little more of a bag than I needed. Uh, I brought my marmot. This is a down, it's a sawtooth 15 degree bag. Uh, works great. Sometimes you get snow like we had in Wyoming a couple weeks ago and uh, the bottom of your feet from condensation and everything sometimes it, uh, at least on a down bag you can end up with condensation down at the end by your feet so I bring this little bivy and it's waterproof and I throw that in there that way if I do have condensation running down for some strange reason it's gonna land on my bivy, not on my bag. And we all know that a down bag is a bit harder to dry out. So, um, then you'll see right here, I have my Neo Air. Uh, no secrets on that, everybody uses them. This here is a cocoon pillow, really lightweight. Helps you get so much better sleep and more of it. And then here I have a liner. The reason I carry a couple ounce sleeping bag liner is I don't like having to wash my sleeping bag all the time. I mean, I do wash it, but it's easier if you're gonna be on two or three trips if you can just wash the liner instead of the whole bag. Because a lot of times I'm on the road and I'm all set up at home to wash my sleeping bag and my home washer and dryer, but on the road it's a pain, especially trying getting it dried out. All of that fits in this one compression bag. And then that compression bag fits in my Mystery Ranch Marshall. Uh, for clothes, I brought one puffy uh, kind of whatever you want to call it. It's a, it's a hollow fill. Primo loft is what it is. Um, I call them puffies, but it's, it's strictly for, you know, having some sort of airspace in between you. I don't know if I'll even need it. Maybe at night around camp I'll wear it. Uh, beanie cap, you never know. Mountain money. Don't ever forget that. How did this get wet? Oh, well. It'll still work. Um, <clears throat> one core zip tee one uh, additional merino top one additional pair of Kenetrek wool socks one pair of long handles merino uh, long johns whatever you want to call them uh, just because I wore a lighter weight pant and if it does get cold I want to do that and then two pair of synthetic underwear uh, that's it. That's what I bring for clothes for a five-day hunt. If you can't stay warm with that, then you need to work on what kind of clothing and what kind of layering system you have because that's that right there should do it for the most part. And that's what's in my pack. And then I bring uh, a small stove, bring enough food, dehydrated food for five days and you're off and running you're hunting good gear is worth every dollar bad worth bad gear isn't worth one penny when you're up here the last thing you want is gear that's going to fail on you not only are you going to be uncomfortable you're going to lessen the likelihood of success but also a lot of people this would be their trip of the year and you don't want to have gear that lets you down
you only get so many of these kind of trips. So invest in quality gear. You won't regret it.